Welcome back to Countries of North America. As we covered last time, there are 23 sovereign nations in North America, each with their own distinct cultures and histories. In part one, we covered the 13 English-speaking countries of North America, and in part two, we'll cover the 10 predominantly Spanish and French-speaking countries. In case you missed my please don't kill me side note from last time, Canada is included in the English-speaking countries just because I had to make a simple choice one way or the other, so please don't kill me. All right, let's learn a bit about each of the Spanish and French-speaking countries of North America. Hey, all you bitizens of the internet, welcome to Learn A Bit. I don't really have anything important to say during this bit, except please make sure that you leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so yet to see more content like this. Now, as always, let me know some interesting facts that I missed about your country down below. All right, first alphabetically is Costa Rica. Now, Costa Rica is a Central American country famous for its unbelievable biodiversity, ecotourism, and its ecological preservation efforts. The country boasts a tropical climate, and you can encounter many of the species typically associated with the rainforests of the Americas, such as the sloth and toucans. Costa Rica is actually home to more than 5% of the entire world's biodiversity, even though its landmass only takes up 0.03% of the planet's surface. Costa Rica also has an interesting geographic phenomenon going on, due to its position near the equator. The country is between 8 and 12 degrees north of the equator, so it has exactly 12 hours of sunlight and 12 hours of nighttime every single day of the year. That's right, the sun rises and sets at the exact same time 365 days a year. Costa Rica is also known for much more than just its sites, however. For one, it holds the record as the largest country in terms of population to have no standing military. This is quite the accomplishment, particularly given its sometimes turbulent geographic neighborhood. Second is Cuba. Cuba is the largest island in the Caribbean and has the largest population of any Caribbean island nation. It's one of only five officially communist nations in the world and has one of the highest literacy rates in all of Latin America. The country is incredibly proud of its doctors. Cuba boasts one of, if not the highest rate of doctors per capita of any place in the world at 8.2 doctors for every 1,000 people. It has so many doctors that the country actually exports them to other countries. One of the country's largest sources of revenue is actually its doctors working abroad, who send home around $11 billion annually. American author Ernest Hemingway also wrote The Old Man in the Sea and For Whom the Bell Tolls while living in Cuba. He lived there for many years on his farm, which is now a museum. Cuba is only one of two countries in the world where Coca-Cola is not sold the other being North Korea. U.S. trade sanctions make selling Coca-Cola to the country illegal. Now, all of this is incredibly ironic, of course, since Cuba was one of the first three countries outside the U.S. to bottle Coca-Cola. Now, I know what you are all thinking. No, this isn't Dominica. The Caribbean island nation occupies the eastern two-thirds of the island of Hispaniola, the second largest Caribbean island. The Dominican Republic is one of the fastest growing economies in Latin America and has already established a reputation as a beautiful tourist destination. And from personal experience, they probably have the fastest spoken Spanish of any country in the world. The Dominican Republic is one of the first sites of European settlement in the Americas and therefore has some of the oldest European style buildings and institutions in the Americas. The oldest cathedral, hospital, and university in the New World are found in the Dominican Republic. This nation also really loves baseball. The DR has the most foreign-born players represented in Major League Baseball. There are currently 102 Dominican players in the MLB. The Dominican Republic is interestingly the only country in the world to have the Bible on its national flag. Opened to the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 32, which reads, And the truth shall set you free in Spanish. El Salvador is the smallest country in Central America. The small country borders Honduras and Guatemala. El Salvador is interestingly the most densely populated country in the Americas, with a population of over 6 million squeezed into an area just under the size of Massachusetts, or Wales. 
This is also the only country in Central America that doesn't have a coastline on the Caribbean Sea. In 1969, El Salvador was infamously involved in one of the most interestingly named conflicts ever, a 100-hour war with Honduras, sometimes called the Football War. It is called this because the spark for the conflict came from violence between fans at a series of soccer matches between El Salvador and Honduras. Tensions between the two countries had been growing for some time due to land reform and immigration issues as well as the expulsion of Salvadoran farmers from Honduras. And the violence at the soccer matches acted like tinder for the conflict. The war lasted only 100 hours before the ref broke them up. Guatemala is something like the capital of the Mayan world, and has a far stronger indigenous presence than most other Latin American nations. One interesting fact is that the many Mayan languages of the country are spoken by almost 31% of the population, and a few smaller indigenous languages are also spoken. In no other country in Latin America besides Paraguay and Bolivia have indigenous languages persevered to this extent. You'll still commonly see many Mayan people today dressed in the traditional dress of their particular group. Every group has its own patterns and designs. From personal experience, I can also attest that in Guatemala they take coffee very seriously. They produce some of the highest quality coffee in the world and coffee is one of Guatemala's main exports. One fascinating fact is that the instant coffee process was invented in Guatemala by George Washington. No, not that one, a different one actually. Guatemala's Lake Atitlan is the deepest lake in Central America and is often considered one of the most beautiful lakes in the world. Haiti is a Caribbean island nation with a fascinating history and culture. It occupies the western third of the island of Hispaniola, which it shares with the Dominican Republic. Haiti is one of only two countries in North America to have French as an official language, the other being Canada. Haiti was the first nation ever to be founded by former slaves, although certainly not the last. A slave revolt, which began in 1791, established Haiti as the second independent nation and the first free black republic in the Americas. It is the only country in North America where a Creole language is an official language. Like we saw in part one, most other Caribbean island nations also speak a Creole language, but none are as popular or widespread as Haitian Creole, and none are an official language. Creole languages are an extremely unique type of language, the result of an interesting phenomenon which is too complicated to fully explain here. In broad strokes, however, a creole forms when speakers of different backgrounds need to essentially create a new common language to communicate. Speakers take vocabulary from a dominant language they might all have some limited knowledge of, in Haiti's case, French, and use a very simplified grammar from their own native languages, in this case, various African languages. This language is called a pidgin language, and no, not like the bird. When the pidgin language becomes a child's first language, that language is said to have creolized. If you want to learn more about creole languages and what makes them so unique, go check out Langfocus's video on the topic. Fascinatingly, Haiti was also the first country in the Caribbean to have a city with electricity. In 1925, the city of Jacmel became the first city in the Caribbean to have electricity and became known as the City of Lights. Honduras is a Central American country whose name means the depths. Honduras holds an interesting claim to fame. It was the first country to ban smoking in your own home. However, don't think this means that the country is uptight. Honduras is also well known for its celebrations. The city of Comayagua is famous for a Good Friday tradition in which residents create colorful sawdust carpets that depict religious imagery. The carpets are then trampled during a large parade, so you'll only get a brief window to see the elaborate work. If you want an adrenaline rush, Honduras also has you covered there. Honduras's Tonkantin International Airport is frequently rated as one of the most dangerous airports in the world. Weather is frequently poor and gusty, and the thin runway is located in a narrow valley, forcing pilots to make a sharp turn upon descent. Anecdotally, it is said that it is very common to see many passengers preying upon descent. Mexico. Mexico is the cultural and population powerhouse of the Spanish-speaking Americas. 
Mexico is an amazing country full of history, beautiful people, and so many vibrant cultures. Now, it's very common knowledge that Mexico is well known for emigration, particularly to the US. But stick with me because there are some interesting statistical oddities about its people's movement patterns that many people are unaware of. Over 11 million Mexican immigrants live in the US, making them by far the largest immigrant group. By number of citizens living overseas, Mexico is actually second only to India, which has 10 times the population of Mexico. However, in a huge twist of irony in recent years, more people have actually moved from the US to Mexico than have moved from Mexico to the US. Between 2009 and 2014, over a million people migrated from the US to Mexico, while around 870,000 people migrated from Mexico to the US. Americans, frequently those of Mexican descent, are the largest immigrant group in Mexico, numbering around 800,000. Despite a popular misconception, Cinco de Mayo is not actually Mexico's Independence Day, nor is it even widely celebrated in Mexico. The country actually celebrates its Independence Day on September 16th. Cinco de Mayo actually marks Mexico's victory in the Battle of Puebla over a French invasion force back in 1862. While in Mexico it isn't really celebrated anywhere but Puebla, the holiday is celebrated widely in the US. The holiday's acceptance by Mexican-American communities varies. It was originally devised by civil rights activists to celebrate Mexican heritage in the US, but was also more controversially co-opted by beer companies as a way to sell more beer, which helped it to become popular. It has since become a somewhat complicated celebration of Mexican heritage and culture, not unlike St. Patrick's Day for Americans of Irish descent. Third, Mexico is actually a substantial hub of innovation. A color television system was independently invented by a 17-year-old Mexican inventor in the 1930s. The birth control pill was invented by Carl Gerasi in 1951 in Mexico City, and the first anti-graffiti paint was synthesized in Mexico in 2003. Nicaragua is a Central American country characterized in part by the giant lake in the middle of it, Lake Nicaragua. Lake Nicaragua is actually the largest lake in Central America. It is unique because although Lake Nicaragua is a freshwater lake, it contains species typically found in the ocean, like sawfish, tarpon, and even sharks. Partly because of this lake, Nicaragua was actually in competition with Panama as the place where engineers would build a canal through Central America. Although the canal was eventually built in Panama, Nicaragua's story might not be over here. China is currently working on plans to build a Nicaragua canal, which would hypothetically be larger and deeper than even the current Panama Canal. Most of Nicaragua's east coast is a part of a region called the Mosquito Coast, which surprisingly has no relation to the insect at all. Instead, it is named for the Mosquito People, an indigenous group that remained fairly separate from the Spanish-controlled colony of Nicaragua. The area was long contested between the British and their Mosquito allies, and the Spanish. So even to this day, you can still find some speakers of an English Creole language there, as well as settlements with English names like Bluefields. Panama is a Central American nation that sits at the crossroads of North and South America, making it the perfect country to wrap up our North America list. It contains the famous Panama Canal, connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. In 2019 alone, over 252 million tons of cargo passed through the canal. One fact you might not know, however, is Volcán Barú, the highest point in the country, is the only place in the world where you can see the sun rising over the Pacific Ocean, yes, rising, and setting over the Atlantic Ocean due to the thin horizontal strip that is Panama's landmass. Interestingly, Panama City is the only capital city in the world to have an actual rainforest within its city limits. Given the previous fact then, it should come as little surprise that Panama has a huge array of wildlife. It actually has more bird species residing within it than the entire continental United States. So, thanks to all you citizens for watching part two of Countries of North America, and I hope you all enjoyed. If I missed anything cool about your country, please make sure to let me know about it down in the comments. I really enjoyed making these two videos, and I'd like to make more of these for other continents in the future. 
So let me know if that's something that you'd like to see. If you liked the video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. This has been Learn A Bit. Thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.